Welcome back everyone to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial and this video was requested by one of my Patreons and if you want me to create tutorials specifically for your games then make sure to check links down in the description box. So what I have here is a default third person template and uh, I have some door static mesh and that's basically it. First let's create the door that we can actually unlock so to do that I will create a new static mesh actor type. I'm gonna call this BP door. Let's open this up. And for the static mesh, let's select our doors. There we go. Let's make sure that these doors are set to be movable so we can actually open and close them. Let's go to the event graph. Let's remove these nodes right here. I'm gonna leave the begin play for now and I'm gonna tell you in a second why. But first, let's create a new custom event and let's call this open door. Now from here what I want to do is add a timeline so that we could open our doors and let's call this door timeline and this is basically going to calculate the uh, rotation for us. Now to give this some value let's double click this and this will bring us to this screen right here. We can add a new float track to this. Let's call this Z axis and I'm going to change the length of this to to two seconds since I want my doors to open within two seconds. Now I'm going to right click and add a new curve float and I'm going to set time to zero and value to zero so that at the beginning of the animation the doors would be at zero rotation. Now I'm going to right click again add another key and I'm going to set time to two so that it would be at the end of the uh, at the end of this uh, timeline and I will add value 90 to rotate my doors 90 degrees. Now you can't really see where this thing went it's way up there so we can click this um, zoom to fit vertical and now it's way way more visible. Now to make the um, door animation a little neater you can select both of these by holding shift and then right click and select auto and this basically gives a little curve so that it would like kind of ease into the animation. And that's going to be it for the timeline. Now we can go back to the event graph. Let's drag in our static mesh component and let's set the world rotation. Rotation. There we go. Connect this to the update and let's make this rotator and we can connect our Z axis right here. But the issue is that in the world we might rotate our doors in all kinds of directions and then these rotations will be faulty. So to avoid some errors what we can do is on begin play we can drag in our static mesh component we can get the world rotation to know the default rotation of our doors and then we can simply promote this to a variable and let's call this um, default rotation. Now that we know our default rotation what we can do over here is from this make rotator we can do combine rotators and combine uh, this timeline with our default rotation. There we go. Now we need one more custom event to close our doors. So let's create a custom event and let's call this close door. And this one needs to be connected to the reverse. And that's basically going to be it for the doors. Now let's create another blueprint. So blueprint class static mesh actor and this is going to be our puzzle. So BP puzzle and this is going to allow us to unlock the doors. So what I want to do here is add some static meshes to this. So I'm going to create one for now and I'm going to add a cylinder because I don't really have a mesh for this. So let's create a cylinder. Let's give this some a little, little more decent sizing and let's give this some texture so we can actually see that we are rotating this. There we go. So now the next thing what I want to do is duplicate this twice to have three of these. Let's move these out a little bit like so. Now we can go to the event graph and let's add a new function and let's call this rotate and this function is going to rotate our meshes. So over here we need a couple of inputs. The first one is going to be the component that we are going to rotate 
So this needs to be a primitive component. And we need another input, which is going to be, let's call this rotate left. And this is going to tell us the direction in which we are going to rotate. So this is going to be a Boolean. Now from here, from this rotation, we're going to do a if branch check to see in which rotation we want to go to. And now from this component, we can add relative rotation. And we need to do this in both cases on true and on false. So let's do that. Let's connect the target for both of these. And I'm going to split the rotators to get float values. Now we need to set up the actual values. So to do that, I'm going to add a new variable and I'm going to call this rotate value. And let's make this into a float. And by default, I'm going to make this five degrees. You can set any you like. So now let's drag this in. Now, if the rotation left is true, that means that we want to go in the negative direction. So what I'm going to do is simply multiply this float with minus one and connect this to the Z axis since we are going to rotate our meshes in the Z axis. But for the false route, we can simply connect this directly without multiplying this. Now let's create another function which is going to check our code to see if we can actually unlock the doors. So inside of here, what I want to do is add a new input, which is going to be our component input. And this needs to be the primitive component. And from here, what I want to do is check if this thing is equal with any of our static meshes that we have. So I'm going to create three of these since I have three static meshes. And I'm going to connect all of these like so, and also make sure to connect the component itself as well. Then from all three of these, I want to do a if branch check to see if they are equal. And if they are not, then I want to proceed to the next one. So make sure to connect the conditions. There we go. And now I will add a local variable and I'm going to call this selected mesh, which is going to be an integer. And this is going to represent which mesh we, uh, we are selecting. So on all of the true routes, let's connect this and set this value. So the first one is going to be zero. The second one is going to be one. And the third one is going to be two. Now let's add some more variables. Then this one is going to be called code and this needs to be a float and this needs to be an array of floats and this is going to contain the code that we need to unlock the doors. So since I have three meshes, I'm going to add three entry entries to this. The first one is going to be 50, 20 and let's say 15. The values can be anywhere from minus 180 up until plus 180 and that's, that creates basically a full 360 rotation. And there is another array that we want to create. And this is going to be, let's call this code is good. And this is going to be a Boolean array. And also this needs three entries. And real quick, let's create the last variable that we are going to need. And this is going to be called door. And for this one, let's use our BP door actor type. And this needs to be a single variable. Let's compile and save this. And as of right now, we cannot select the door, but once we shall move this into the world, we will be able. And in order for us to edit variables outside in the world, we need to make sure that these are instance editable and exposed on spawn. And I'm going to do the same thing for the code variable as well. And same goes for the rotation value so that we can have different codes and different rotation values for any of our puzzles, because we will be able to duplicate this. Now let's actually check if the code is correct on the specific component. And to do that, we need to get the relative rotation. And from this one, I want to split this because we actually only need the Z axis. Now let's drag in our code. All right. And let's get a copy. And for the index, let's use our selected mesh. Now from over here, let's drag from this and let's uh, check equal and let's use nearly equal because rotations uh, tend to add little units to it. So we need to have some error tolerance. And in my case, I'm just going to add one in the error tolerance and that should be good enough. And for the B route, let's use our Z axis. Now we can drag in our code is good variable and let's set the RI element and let's set the item from this uh, Boolean return value right here. And for the index, we can use our selected mesh. 
And now we can connect all of our execution pins from our set selected mesh variable like so. And once we have done that, let's loop through our code is good. So let's drag this in once more. Let's do a loop with a break. And for this one, let's add a new local variable and let's call this, let's see, local failed perhaps. And this needs to be a Boolean. And so what we want to do over here is in this loop, we want to do a if branch check to see if this is true. If this is false, then we want to set our local failed to be true. And we can proceed to break the loop since if we fail one of these, it's pointless to go through the whole RI uh, because we will not be able to open the doors. Now from the complete, we can do another if branch check. And here we need to check if our local failed is true or false. And here we can drag in our door th doors now. And from the doors, we can do open door and we can do our get uh, closed door. We don't need to get anything. So from the true, that means we failed. That means we need to make sure the doors are closed. But if it's false, that means we are able to open our doors. Now with this, we are basically done. And what we need to do is in our rotate function, we need to run our check code from both of these. So let's do so and let's connect our component as well. And one more thing that I want to add to this, which is not necessary and you definitely don't want to do this in your finished project, but I want to print the rotations to make sure everything is working properly. So what I will do is simply print a string. And for the string, what I want to print is from the component itself, I want to get the relative rotation to see what rotation I'm getting. And there we go, we have connected this and this should work properly now. So one last thing that we are left to do is actually create a possibility for us to interact with these actors. So to do so, let's go to our character, character blueprint, there we go. And what I wanna do is add two keyboard events. So keyboard E event, and I also want to add a keyboard Q event. And to make life easier, let's create a new variable and let's call this rotate left so that we know in which direction we want to rotate. So here we are going to set this to be false and on here we're going to set this to be true. Now let's add a new function and let's call this interact with puzzle. Let's drag in our first person camera and what we want to do with it is get the world location and we also want to get the forward vector because we want to have a direct line from our camera to some units in front of it. So let's multiply our forward vector, let's say with perhaps 400. And now we can multi uh, add both of these together, world location and this newly created vector. And this is going to be our end position for our line trace by channel. So this is the end position and for the start position we can get the camera location. Now from the line trace by channel we can do a if branch check to see if we have actually hit something and we can break the hit result. What we could do over here now is uh, from the hit actor we could cast to our puzzle but let's say we have multiple different blueprints for multiple different puzzles that means that we should cast to many of those but in order for us to avoid uh, all of these cast two nodes what we can do is add a blueprint interface so i'm going to right click look for blueprints and select blueprint interface and let's call this interact with puzzles let's open this up and inside of here let's rename this to interact with puzzle and let's add a couple of inputs so the first one would be the component again so this is the primitive component and let's add another one which is our rotate left and this is a boolean. There we go. Now we can go to our third person character, delete this cast to node and instead of using that one we can do interact with a puzzle and we need to look for the message one. Now we can connect this one to the true if we have hit something then we can interact with the puzzle using the hit actor as the target and for the component let's use our hit component 
And for the rotate left, let's connect our rotate left variable. There we go. Now let's go back to the event graph and on E and Q keys, let's run our interact with puzzle function. So there we go. It should look something like this. And in order for us to run this in our puzzle BP, let's go to the event graph and first we need to go to our class settings and add uh, a new interface. And let's look for our newly created interact with puzzles interface. Make sure you compile first and then what we can do is look for the event interact with puzzle. So if we have added the interface and compiled this, this event will be available to us. So now from this one we can run our rotate function and connect the component and rotate left. Like so. So now let's compile and save this. Let's go to the game world. Let's drag in our doors. Let's rotate these so that they are in front of us. Same goes for this actor right here as well. Let's move this like so. Move it up. Now that we have these in place, let's select our puzzle. And now we can look for these default values. So we could change the code on any of the uh, puzzles we have. And here we have this door variable. So what we want to do over here is select this thing right here. Pick actor from scene. And then we can select our door and this is setting this specific actor. But this only works while these actors are in the world. So once we have selected this, we can press play and try this puzzle out. So let's see, this should be 50, this should be 20 and this should be 15. And it does not work. So let's try this the other way around. 15, 20, 50. There we go. The doors are getting opened and if we change the value, they are getting closed. So as you can see I made another one and on the right side you can see that this should be 10 or maybe this one we'll, we'll figure it out. So this is minus 100 and this is 20 or maybe not maybe this is 10 and then that means this is 20. There we go. So as you can see you can have different codes, different rotation values and different doors for different puzzles using exactly the same blueprints. So like always, thank you guys for watching. If you want to help the channel grow, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like, leave a comment and I see you guys in the next episode.